Hi everyone, it's been a while since I updated you on my prostate cancer recovery. So I thought I'd do a quick video and just talk about um, where I'm at with incontinence, which was one of the major side effects following the surgery. You might remember that immediately following surgery, um, I sported these very, very sexy briefs. They're absorbent briefs. Um, I found them very helpful in the early days um, because they are a complete brief, so um, in terms of any leakage, um, they do a great job of making sure that you know you don't have any embarrassing moments. Um, however, they are not only probably the ugliest things you'll ever put on your body, um, but they're also um, a bit hot in this Texas heat um, because of the way that they're made, obviously, to keep liquids in. They're not very breathable. Um, and I wore these for several weeks after surgery. I, I probably could have transitioned out of these earlier than I did, but, but um, I just didn't feel confident, so um, I wore these more as a safety precaution than anything else. After that, I moved to a pad, and the pad um, is the maximum absorbency pad, and um, you wear this, you insert this into just your normal underwear. Obviously, you would not wear boxers, um, boxer briefs or briefs, something that's tight-fitting to the body. Um, but again, it's rather large. You don't notice it in clothes. Um, I didn't have to really uh, think about what clothes I was wearing, shorts, jeans, whatever. Um, you really didn't notice it, um, it even though it's, it's pretty thick. Um, again, the problem with these is that, again, they're pretty hot, um, but they get the job done. Um, and so this is something that um, I wore, um, again, several weeks um, after transitioning out of uh, the full absorbency brief. Now, I'm happy to say that about the three month mark is when I, I would say that I had continence again. And I attribute that to doing Kegels um, at least 100 times a day. I have an app on my phone which allows me to just track um, and I just track in sets of 10, so I make sure that I get 10 sets of 10 in a day at minimum. And uh, if you don't know how to do Kegels properly, make sure that you Google that and that you are exercising that muscle. It is critical um, following surgery. Now, between the time of my diagnosis and surgery, um, there wasn't a lot of time. I did do Kegels um, leading up to surgery. Um, and watching other video blogs, I heard uh, other men talk about not having any issues with incontinence after surgery um, and was surprised by that, um, given my experience. But I, I can see where if you have an opportunity to do Kegels leading up to the surgery, where that's really going to help you as soon as that catheter is removed. Um, if not, and you're like me, and you are having the surgery um, shortly after your diagnosis, um, just hang in there, it, it definitely gets better. Um, there were times where I thought, I don't know if I'll ever be comfortable um, again, kind of in social settings or if I have a cocktail or whatever, um, but you'll definitely get there. So now I'm happy to say that I'm in the very light brief, the light absorbency pad. Um, this goes into your, um, again, into your either briefs or boxer briefs. You can see how thin it is. Um, I'd say 99% of the time, um, mine is completely dry. This is just kind of a safety net, right? Um, in terms of the biology of everything, your prostate um, is there and it operates somewhat as a valve um, so that um, when you have urine, um, your, your prostate um, can keep that urine from flowing out. Now that you don't have that, you're doing the kegels and you're training your muscles um, to make sure that you're holding that urine in. Um, so I'm using this, and like I said, most times I don't, it's really just there as, as a safety net, make sure that there isn't an accident. Um, haven't really noticed like walking around or anything, any, any type of leakage at all, um, so that's fantastic. Um, I'm also much more comfortable, like today we went to the pool, uh, went swimming. Um, obviously, there's no pad when you're swimming, um, and I don't I don't have an issue at all. Um, so I'm actually okay without a pad. Um, 
I'm also running, uh, running about five miles, so maybe an hour outside um, in my shorts and running without a pad. Um, I was running with this, actually all of these pads, at some point in time. Um, however, again, they do tend to hold in heat, so um, as much as you sweat in Texas, I figured if there was a little bit of leakage, it would not matter. Um, but I find I, I, don't, I don't leak while I run, which is pretty amazing considering, you know, there's a lot of movement, you're standing upright, um, that's when you could have uh, your bladder actually cause a little bit of leakage. So hopefully this is good news for other guys out there that um, have gone through the surgery, may be struggling with this, or will go through the surgery. Just hang in there. Um, if you continue to do your exercises, hopefully you will find that uh, you'll gain full continence, uh, just like I have. So uh, if you have any questions or comments about uh, your my prostate ex cancer experience, uh, please let me know. I should know um, the next main update that I hope to give you is um, that my PSA is declining. I will find out at the beginning of July, kind of directionally, what my PSA tests um, are reporting. Uh, after my first PSA, it came back at 0.13, so it's not at undetectable levels yet. So um, I'm very hopeful and optimistic that what we find is that, um, in my particular case, my PSA had reached as high as 13, and that the levels are starting to come down um, even further. That uh, they were just very, very elevated, and it's taken some time to get them to undetectable levels. Um, but I'll certainly let you guys know um, in a few weeks. So until then, let me know if you have any questions or comments. Thanks.